All right, so my name's Huey Lin, um, and like I said, this is our fourth time doing this, and we have a really fantastic faculty um, for you today that are coming from all over the country. Um, it is also our very first Houston Congenital Heart Defect Awareness Week, which was a, a proclamation by the mayor, Sylvester Turner, um, earlier this week. So this entire week has been Congenital Heart Defect Awareness Week, and thank you for being here to help us celebrate it. So why are we here? Saturday morning, 8 o'clock in the morning. Some of you probably here since 7.30. Well, for those of us here in the front uh, couple rows, we know that this is what adult congenital heart disease population looks like. And the reason why that's the case is this. So how many of you guys have actually seen Fantasia within the last five years? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you guys actually remember the Sorcerer's Apprentice story? Okay, thinning out crowd. Okay, so here's what happens in the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Okay, Mickey is the Sorcerer's Apprentice. The sorcerer goes away and does something else, and so Mickey finds the sorcerer's magical hat, and it confers on him all these magical powers. And Mickey is the apprentice, so he has to do these chores, he has to wash the floorboards, et cetera, et cetera. So he gets this brilliant idea that while the sorcerer is away, he's gonna put on the magical hat, and he's going to start to create some magic so he doesn't have to actually do those chores. And the analogy here is that's what happened when we started doing cardiopulmonary bypass for the very first time in the 1950s. And then even prior to that, there was the first real congenital heart surgery where we actually allowed blue babies to survive starting in the 1940s. But what happens from there is just like Mickey starts to have these magical successes where he gets these um, broomsticks and buckets to start to clean the floors on their own and fill the buckets and start to um, do these amazing things, every half decade, we start to have a population of patients that prior to this, didn't survive childhood. And now we're having these amazing successes all the way into the 1980s where we started seeing for the very first time single ventricle patients surviving through childhood and into now adulthood. So what that means is we have been so successful in the congenital heart community that a child born today has more than 95% likelihood of surviving to adulthood, which means that we have this entire population of patients that we may be completely unprepared for. And so the reason why we're here today is so that we can all together take care of these patients together because that's what it's going to take. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So this is just an example of what we're dealing with. So here in Houston, across the street at Texas Children's Hospital, this is their annual report. And in dark blue in 2014, you see that they operated on more than about 920 hearts, okay? And so when you start looking at the number of pediatric cardiologists in Houston, it's between 50 to 80, depending on the number of FTEs that you're actually counting. Unfortunately, there are only five adult congenital heart doctors here in Houston, which means that there's something imbalanced about how we're actually looking at this. In addition, if you think about just the basic numbers, right, the average pediatric cardiologist will take care of these patients for about 18 years of their lives. And then this magical thing's supposed to happen where they come to the adult side, and then we take care of them for about 50 to 60 years because these patients are now getting to normal life expectancy. And so you can see where this becomes a real problem. In addition to that, transition is not perfect. So we don't have a perfect way of getting these patients from childhood to an adult congenital specialist. And so most of the patients are lost to follow-up completely. In fact, they're not seeing any physicians at all. And then many of them are actually seeing general cardiologists and their general internists. And that's why we think one of the most important things that we need to do is to engage general cardiologists and general internists so that that way we can help to take care of these patients together. So the truth is, it affects 1% of all live births. So what that means is everyone knows someone with congenital heart disease. And what do I mean by that? Well, it actually turns out that not only do you have patients with congenital heart disease that may not actually recognize, you have friends, family, loved ones that may have congenital heart disease that you may not recognize. Many of these patients are not really willing to talk about it. Many of them don't actually want to tell you that they have congenital heart disease. So the reality is that when you find out, it's really important that you create a safe situation for them so they can talk about it and then you encourage them to understand that they need to get into specialized congenital heart care. And that's gonna be a theme that you're gonna see recurring throughout the talks today, because you're gonna get a flavor for all the different types of things that can happen to these patients when they reach adulthood. 
And the reality is we really need to have all hands on deck. Why? Well, we've learned the lesson. It used to be that we used to practice adult congenital heart disease in this ivory tower academic method, which meant that we expected all these patients to come to see us in our academic centers. Well, I just told you that's not happening and that's not working. So the reality is that we need everybody to come together out into the community, two hours away from the academic medical center, five hours away from the medical center, so that that way we can work together to take care of these patients because as you can see, an 80 to five ratio is not gonna work for anybody at this point in time. So we need to do this together. And the reality is the Houston population reflects this. So there we are right there with the red dot in the medical center, but look at where all the patients are. Look at where all the population is. They don't live here in the medical center, right? It's pretty expensive to live here in the medical center. So most of them live 45 minutes away, an hour away, two hours away, depending on the traffic that day, depending on whether or not there's flooding that day, right? We all know about that. So the reality is that they are being seen out in Sugarland, the Woodlands, Katy, Clear Lake, right? And so it's impossible for us five adult congenital heart providers to provide all the adult congenital heart care out in all those peripheral areas. So we need to work with you to actually make that happen. And the reality is, by the best calculations, we have at least 30,000 in Houston alone. Not sure, it actually may be a lot more than that. And then these are updates on the guidelines. If we wanna take care of these patients, it needs to be a partnership between both the, um, both the general providers, the general cardiologists, and an adult congenital heart center, because the reality is there can be very sophisticated issues that can happen to these patients when we start to do caths on them, when we start to do surgery on them, when we start to give them anesthesia, okay? And so working together is really the key thing. And this is my theme for this week, okay? For Congenital Heart Defect Awareness Week. We as adult hospitals need to start to put on our big boy pants when it comes to taking care of adults with congenital heart disease. It's not fair to say that it's okay just to push them to the pediatric hospitals. That's not enough anymore. We need to step up and offer the services that these patients need every step of the way. Why? Because we have the services in our hospitals, whether it's orthopedics, oncology, neurosurgery, neurology, ophthalmology, or even transplant. We have them for adult patients in our adult hospitals. The key is how do we make it safe? How do we make it work? And the key element is that we have to do this together as a team. So how are we going to do today's symposium? What you might find is this is a little bit different from most courses that you're going to go to because you're gonna find pretty soon out there there's gonna be a bunch more people. Who are they? They're patients. Their patients and their families, because this is uh, two courses in one. So you are in this room, you're gonna be going through basic comprehensive adult congenital heart training, okay? And then later on this afternoon, after lunch, you're gonna go upstairs and do the hands-on learning lab, where you're actually gonna learn about how we use certain types of devices, um, valves, transcatheter valves, defibrillators, ventricular assist devices to take care of adults with congenital heart disease. At the same time, the patients are actually gonna be going through the hands-on learning lab now, and then they're gonna come back for a shared didactic session with you. So you will have a first-hand chance to actually meet some of these patients and actually find out how hard it is sometimes to tell a patient with congenital heart disease versus one of your regular patients. So I wanna make sure I point out some really great people. We have the first scholarship award winners for the Dill Congenital Heart Symposium. Can you raise your hand if you were a scholarship award winner, please? These three folks were so dedicated to travel from another country, um, across state lines, to come and join us today. So they are showing some incredible dedication to adult congenital heart disease. So anyway, the final thing that I want to say is this. This is safe space. Please ask questions. Poll Everywhere will let you ask questions anonymously. But at the same time, if you want to just tweet us afterwards, send us a message on direct messaging on Twitter. It, that would be a great way to actually communicate with us as well, okay? We want to allow every single possible question to come up. If you have any question, even if you think it's stupid, even if you think it reflects you didn't really pay attention during the course, that's okay. Come up to us afterwards, pull us aside, and ask those questions. Um, thank you for joining us and supporting congenital heart disease awareness. Now you are going to be our ambassadors from today forward so that you can help us to bring these congenital heart disease patients back into care and make sure they're getting the safe preventive care that they're actually going to need. So in my last four minutes, we're gonna start Pull Everywhere, okay? So pull out your phones. 
Can we start up the Poll Everywhere questions? So the first one is easy. My heart is beating right now. Yes, no, I'm not sure. Can we put up the numbers too? Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> That's pretty worrisome. <laughs> OK. All right. That's just to make sure everybody's paying attention. At least nobody said no. OK, let's go to the next question. OK, so what kind of patients do you take care of? I take care of 100% adults, mostly adults, about 50-50 adults and kids, mostly kids, 100% kids. I guess I should have put in don't know. All right, very interesting spread. OK, let's go on to the next question. All right, I have taken care of an adult with congenital heart disease in the last year. Yes, yes, maybe. Well, I'm not sure, no. Oh, somebody changed their answer. Great. So now we know why we're all here. OK, let's go to the next question. And this is just to get a sense of who's here in the room with us. OK, I am a physician, a nurse, an advanced practice provider, a rad tech, a sonographer, a trainee, a patient or family advocate, or other. Ooh, interesting. A lot of others. Great. OK. Well, thank you very much. Hopefully, you guys have a great day today. I think this is going to be a wonderful experience. And enjoy our wonderful faculty. Thank you.